So now we're going to move away from protein sequence to protein structure. And uh, so what, we're going to discuss why we want to do it. And particularly today, we'll talk about secondary structure predictions and do a bit of a historical overview. So why do we care about protein structure? And that's because it actually is quite useful to understand the protein and its function. It can give you close to the active site, the binding sites, conformation changes. Probably the most uh, important and most obvious case is the structure of DNA. As soon as the structure model was presented, it was obvious how information was retrieved from uh, one generation to the next generation, how it was kept. And, uh, but also had many other cases of the function really is important, the structure really gives the function. And the other reason why we want to do structure predictions is because there is 3D structure determination is difficult, slow and expensive. It's improving, you get better and better, but it's still time consuming. So for the vast majority of proteins, we will never ever be able to have a protein structure, but we know the sequence. So if you can get uh, the uh, protein structure by using computers and do that, we would have a lot of insight in the proteins without having to do experimental evidence. Third is what's the interactive challenge. Proteins fold by itself, and we want to be able to describe it. And it's actually also a very useful approach related that has used a very similar technique is to engineer proteins. We actually want to if you understand how protein structure is formed, we should be able to also design a protein that looks like we in a particular way. That's called the sometimes it's called the inverse protein folding problem, but it's more, more likely called protein design. So an application is drug binding. Basically, almost all drugs that are developed today have used structure in some way. So you basically find a pocket where you want to bind something and drug, you know, try to optimize a small chemical ligand to fit there. And then of course you have to test it. It's not the only thing used, but it's a useful part of it. Another application is actually finding home logs. It's just getting less and less important with the increase of sequences. But for a long time it was actually many cases where you didn't realize there was homology between proteins until you have used you know, these sort of structures and they were very similar. Now with the increased increased sequence databases and the known and the better methods to detect homology, we are often able to find homology even without using structure. And it also was used for a long time for overall genome characterization because it was the structure was used to define domain protein families. That is also, of course, disappearing with the with the known families from other reasons. However, the problem is that it's not a simple bridge structure. And it was shown by Anfins in the early 70s, by a study on lifetime, that in principle, all the information that is needed for folded proteins is the amino acid sequence. So he, what he did was that he basically unfolded the protein and sure it could fold back. So that was described the, the overall free energy minima should be the native strato structure. And that has been proven that that's the case for most proteins, perhaps not all, but most of them. However, what Levitol pointed out was that there are thousands of atoms, rotable bonds, solvents, and other molecules to deal with. So if you want to do exhaustive research on this, you end up in an astronomical number. That's what's called Levitol's paradox. So of course we think of, um, just remember that structure is not static. They're dynamic, and actually many times there should be unfolding, folding, etc. It's important that there are even this special group of proteins called disorder proteins that are uh, performing a lot of functions and they might form structure only when they perform these functions. Well, others probably are disordered all the time. So all these actions are connected and it's, it's important for us to understand protein physics. <coughs> 